What have our old buildings ever done for us? This clip on the screen, this entry screen, may be familiar to some of you, and, and I love it. It's a clip from Monty Python's Life of Brian. I'm not, I'm not sure how many of you will be familiar with it. Uh, but in it, John Cleese asks the questions, what have the Romans ever done for us? And of course, they did so much. Built aqueducts, improved sanitation, built roads, schools, education, etc. And it shows just how sometimes we can be blinded by the obvious and just shows how much we can take for granted. So I, as the title of my presentation suggests, want to take this opportunity to highlight what our old buildings have done and continue to do for us. For me, I think it's obvious, but of course it's my job and, and I fully understand that old buildings aren't as high on everyone's agenda as they are on mine. So essentially, why should we bother looking after our old buildings? And I'm just going to go through five key elements which I think are really important. The first is that they have enormous cultural importance and I think the the creme de la creme of those buildings are protected by the nation for the benefit of the nation and but there are many many others and they all give us a sense of place and they illustrate the story of our nation how it's evolved how industry power culture have changed over time and not just looking at that from a historic point of view, but how has that influenced the development of our identity and our way of living and looking at it from a planning point of view, our settlements. If you take these three photos here on the top left, uh, you have um, Blaina Festiniog looking at the industry of the slate mines and of course we're all familiar with the industry of the coal mines and how that has shaped our towns, our villages, our cities um, and how important that's been to Welsh identity. We've got the bear on the top right in Crickowl on a critical trading route through from London to, to Ireland, Fishguard, a classic uh, toll road a classic it's not a toll pub but a classic drover's road and a, a drover's pub on that route and that tells of movement across the nation and then on the bottom left picture an aerial picture of a of uh, Pembroke Castle and you can see how strategically the city or it's rather a town has developed and how history has played an important role in that They have enormous economic importance, though, and I think mostly people think of uh, cultural uh, heritage buildings for their tourism value. And of course, that is really important. Um, and we look at visitors to our castles and um, and historic uh, landscapes. But of course, for businesses, they imbue a really strong sense of solidity and durability. And this is the Guildhall in, in Carmarthen, in Guildhall Square. And the business that wanted to come into this building uh, and to develop it very much wanted a site that had uh, a historic background, despite there being other vacant um, places where they could go. They wanted a, a symbol of strength. And uh, I think that was a really key reason why they wanted to go through the challenge of developing this um, grade one listed building. And this can be seen across all of our uh, historic towns. So we have um, at the bottom Tenby on the left and Llandudno on the right and the buildings, both those places play a really important part in the identity and the economic success of those places. Um, top left, we have um, the Market Hall from Abergavenny and looking forward to hearing more about Abergavenny later this morning um, and a, a classic uh, Victorian or traditional street scene shops and um, 
and and trading places in in Carnarvon there and these are common across the whole of of our country so that's economic use and I think that they have a good role um, Built old buildings have a good economic role and in fact if you uh, visit Historic England and look at their Heritage Counts publications there's a lot of uh, information there on very real monetary value that old buildings play in um, economic regeneration. Of course they're socially important too and uh, these a lot of the, the feelings that old buildings give people uh, stem from communal and and social meetings. Um, this is this is a chapel uh, in Altwallis in Carmarthenshire, but of course there's working men's clubs, there's town halls, um, and and think of old schools and how many of those are converted into into um, accommodation these days. And of course those schools have played a really important part for a lot of people throughout that community um, and so they imbue uh, those people with a, with a real community value invested in, in that building. Personally important, now I, I think this is a really strong feature of buildings uh, across the UK um, historic buildings tend to be unique because they're a product of their locality and of their history. There are homes and even more so now they are places that we work from and they're probably the most valuable asset that we that we own. And there are lots of them. So I, I find it amazing that in Wales there are half a million domestic uh, homes which are considered historic. And Wales has the largest uh, proportion of traditional buildings from of all the home nations. Um, there being 33% of all our buildings having been built before 1919. So of traditional solid wall construction, which is an enormous number. Um, and these are the sorts of buildings we're talking about. Everyday buildings that many of us live in. And, the fi and finally, that I think they are extremely environmentally important, uh, thinking about how we uh, live and move forward in the uh, current uh, climate crisis. So they're durable and many modern homes have a much shorter guaranteed shelf life. Um, they're built to withstand the climate and so many are very well suited to uh, fluctuations in climate and, and I live in an, in an old building was very grateful for thick solid walls and cool interiors during all that hot weather earlier this year um, but of course if they're looked after properly um, and are breathable then um, they even in in cold weather their walls can act as storage heaters and regulate uh, the heat um, in a very moderating way um, I'm not saying it's cold, that sounds like I'm saying you're cold, but if they're heated properly, then it evens out the temperature and the walls act as storage heaters. But I think one of the most important things to consider is that they have energy embodied in them and to knock them down and replace them uh, would be at a really significant environmental cost. So if you look at this, is just a, a, a little bit of additional thought on this matter, thinking about the life cycle of a building um, and thinking that energy is consumed at every stage of a building's life cycle. So extraction of raw materials, manufacture of building products, the construction of that uh, building, repair and maintenance, any extensions or, or retrofitting, or adding insulation to a building, all of those are embedded in the building. And when we talk about energy saving, very often these days, all we're talking about is reducing our operational costs. Um, and by in, in reducing our operational costs, we're obviously increasing to our embedded carbon costs, our embodied energy. And all of those carbon costs that you can see there as part of the, um, that, that are, um, occur it as part of that life cycle of a building 
um, all of those carbon costs are, uh, you have to start again if you build a new building. With an old building, you've got, you've had those costs, they're spent already. So environmentally, it's much better to keep and repair and look after our uh, existing building stock. So just to summarise, though, um, that just to summarise, you've got cultural importance, economic importance, social importance, important to people on a personal level, and of course, environmental importance. But all of these really are very generic. And what is critical with a building when you're looking at um, looking after a historic high street or looking after a listed building is the ability to understand the detail because without understanding the detail you don't you can't pick up on the 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 relevance the stories of those buildings you can't read those buildings and um, and I think that that's why uh historic character is really important when you're looking at individual buildings um, across the country and historic character is very often considered as a, a sort of broad or, or character in as a in a person is very broad you sort of say oh well, he's got a lovely character or she's a very gentle person and that's considered their character but in historic character uh, it's very clearly defined into these uh, five points here. Um, so form and layout um, is the relationship of the building in the settlement, but it's also the layout and the form of the building within, um, within that building. So how the traditionally the servants quarters might have interacted with the main body of the building. Um, you can see from this picture here, you've got Newtown in Edinburgh up on the uh, right hand corner and this, the form, the layout is a, is a, is a landscape scale, but um, it is part of the character of those buildings and that settlement. And then on the bottom left, again in Edinburgh, you've got um, Arguments um, Yard, which is a little alleyways and a lot of old towns have a lot of these alleyways. And, the way people move through these buildings is in, important. Character is also part of how the buildings are put together, their materials, um, their wear and tear, the craftsmanship that's gone into them. And uh, don't underestimate local styles um, and local detail, um, window styles, door styles, um, fan light styles, all of those are significant to the story of, of that building, but also the story of that settlement and the area around. Um, and I think one thing that's often forgotten is the, the archaeology. So, so the detail is often missed, and that is what makes up the key character of, of buildings and the places in which they're uh, situated. And once you understand that character and the historic importance of that character, um, you start to realise that actually it's really important to use appropriate materials in the care and repair of those buildings, because if you don't, you start to um, really damage those buildings and uh, they deteriorate. And in this, this world where we're talking about sustainability, ensuring that these buildings are looked after properly. Um, and sustain for future generations for all of those benefits which I was talking about earlier is, is really important. Otherwise you end up with rather sad pictures like this where you don't actually believe that that theatre is grand anymore. So our challenge is we need to ensure that uh, this historic resource is sustained for all of those benefits that I've been speaking about, not for us just today, but for future generations. And I truly believe that they can contribute to uh, the regeneration of our high streets. And I hope that that has sort of set the scene, the rationale uh, for the rest of the day. Um, where we're going to hear some more details uh, from 
from others um, about the benefits and the challenges of, uh, of, of regenerating our high streets. When I was um, speaking to potential speakers about this event, um, a number of them were interested. They hadn't visited Carmarthen and they were interested in uh, what the town uh, was like and the sorts of places that we might be focusing on. And so we went out and put together a film and it's a, uh, a short film, five minutes, and I would like to think that it uh, is a really um, honest, brief, straightforward introduction to Carmarthen Town. It's no frills. It uh, touches on some traditional features and the benefits of these to the street scene. Um, it also picks up on some issues of, of maintenance and, and repair and uh, the reuse of buildings, which I know will be discussed in more detail um, during the seminar to a lesser or greater extent. So in Carmarthen County Council, we're obviously thinking about Carmarthen and what we can learn from the speakers today. But I'm guessing um, that uh, Carmarthen's typical of many of the towns that you represent. So I hope this this introduction to the sort of places that the sort of place that we're focusing on today uh, is um, is useful. Uh, in that respect. <clears throat>